in the market in a couple of nanoseconds in uh, the two billion, two billion U.S. dollars in ocean oil paper silver contracts were dumped on the market. Sent silver down to eighteen dollars, and, and it looked like silver wanted to bounce there. Uh, it was testing both uh, its breakout point at eighteen as well as the two hundred day moving average. Uh, and not surprisingly, another massive paper dump sent it through 18, and then once it through, went through 18 and broke that support, all of the algos flipped to the sell side, and it quickly dumped. I think a low of the day was around 1763, 1762. We're talking here in the afternoon, the access market trading, it's uh, recovered a bit back to 1780, but most of the damage remains done. Gold traded almost down to 1230, and it's trading back close to 12.35 at the moment. So, Bill, let's start with the horrific action today. Well, it's classic J.P. Morgan gold cartel stuff. Slaughtered for the last. better than gold, and as I mentioned, they were just, you know, setting it up, and uh, right now, a tough time for the gold and silver markets in the U.S., uh, it, which is different from... looking for a major, you know, move down in the Dow for 1987 style, 1929 style, based on valuations. But, you know, this has been going... Well, um, some of the stories from... Jesse Livermore's um, autobiography.
supported the market and he went broke. He didn't wait to jump onto the short side until he actually saw a snowball start to rolling down the hill. It kind of reminds me to what we see today. I mean, you, myself, uh, most of our listeners, we can see what's coming, just like Jesse looks. But yeah, eventually he was dead right, and he made $10 million on that move, which back in 19... and I've going to said it read it several times and but the one thing that got me in the end he jumped out a window and <laughs> so you got to keep that in mind when uh, about all this stuff and if, if things keep going like this maybe I'll jump out a window Yeah, I know, as you mentioned, we know we know who did it, we know why they did it, but that's, that's another why is to uh, cap manage the sentiment in the sector. Particularly when you have the Dow ripping to new highs every day. Well, uh, well, this is exactly right, and they, they just waited in the weeds. It couldn't be clear when you see a, a, a stock like First Majestic go straight down for weeks, and, and, and silver yesterday uh, made a new high for the move. And in, and in seconds, like you mentioned, it was just all destroyed, like it never happened in the first place. And it was just not free markets. And, and you know, while this is just, to me, it's, it's horrifying, we've been, but we've seen it forever, so it's no surprise. And all I can say is that it's leading to something spectacular in the silver market like never seen before, because this has gone on far too long, and... It's it's all I can. My major theme is going to be like Newton's law. For every action, there's an opposite, uh, an equal. Got it up there trading yeah, legitimately. They took it down by by changing the rules and 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 uh, really screwing the guy unfairly. Is um, in the last bull market. If you compare it to gold, um, nominal terms, anyways, gold is well past uh, its highs from last bull market. Silver, like you said, nowhere near right now, and that's nominal terms. That's not adjusting for inflation. Adjusting for inflation, we're still probably, what, 10% of the level. Yeah, this is, it's really quite something. Uh, I know I follow James Turk, and gold, for, for example, would be, if it just kept up with inflation, no other of the big deals, nothing else would be $3,300, $3,400. And uh, the silver situation is, is, to me, it's out of control, but it stays that way. For people like me that look for something to change, it just doesn't. And they're able to get away with it, and we don't quite understand it. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, 1850 was a, couldn't get through it the last few days. And uh, last, uh, last year when it got through 1850, it took off, and it was starting to take off and went up there, going up to 21 in June, it's the whole move and looked like we were on our way, and that was just dead wrong again. I mean, they just gave back most of the gains by by the end of the years. I can say to, you know, your listeners, that in my opinion, I've been a trader for four decades, this, when it comes Trump and what Trump might do to impact gold and silver prices over the, the second half of 2017, and kind of along with 
battle between the Fed and the Trump over the dollar. Well, it's going to be interesting. And one of my lines is that, you know, Bill Clinton said when I he didn't realize when I became president, I wouldn't be running the show. And unfortunately, I think that's still the same way. Unless if, if anybody can defy things, it would be President Trump. I mean, the one thing that would be remarkable... Like many of us think, and the Gata camp, the goal isn't there. And if he did an audit, as Mr. Truth Teller, as he likes to think of himself, uh, of course, the gold price would take off, but it would be a, a big boon for what you're talking about, about getting the dollar down to help uh, the U.S. employment situation and jobs picture. So it would be an ideal thing for him to do, plus he can blame it on everyone else like he would like to do and say they caused it and it wouldn't be his scandal. And, you know, gold going up for the, the mainstream financial world is bad, down is good. Even Paul Volcker, former Fed chairman, said that. But if gold went up for that kind of a scandal reason, it wouldn't have anything to do as, as acting as a barometer of U.S. financial market health. It wouldn't be any reflection on him. And his policies, it would be a reflection of what other people did and allowed to occur. So I don't know. That's a hope trade. It could happen. Uh, if anybody would, would, would do something like that, it would be Mr. You know, President Trump. But um, we'll see. I mean, in terms of his policies, I mean, he got rave reviews for his speech to Congress uh, the other night, and they deserved it. At the same time, if, if he was a Democrat, the Republicans would be going ape. Where's all this money going to come from? Gold and silver, but black is white and white is black when it comes to the gold cartel. Should go up, they go down. And uh, I don't know, as far as interest rates go, for gold, except, you know, price action makes market commentary, so they make it that way. I know this is what we had in the, in the big move in 79 and 8 to 80. Uh, interest rates were going up, and gold was soaring. But, you know, they, they didn't yeah, know how to get their the own way. Go ahead. We've seen the same thing with the last two interest rate hikes. When they've actually been announced, they've triggered big rate rallies in gold and silver. Look back to December of 2015. Gold prices, silver prices took off when rate hike was announced. Now, they were beaten down um, on expectations going into it, but once uh, the news was on the books and it was confirmed, gold and silver took off. And we saw the same thing uh, here uh, December this past December of 2016. With uh, what a two or three month rally in gold and silver, and so now suddenly the market's anticipating another rate hike in a week and a half. So uh, who knows? Maybe we'll see metals hit hard for a week and a half, and then ignite another rally when the actual hike takes place. Well, it could be, Jim. Where I, you will, I'll go back to, of course. So wait a second. This stuff's been going on for days, and silver creeping up. What made it? As you said, you know, the billions of dollars hit the market all of a sudden. Like, it didn't, like, all of a sudden happen overnight about a rate going up. This is what gets me. In other words, they make this happen. This is what the gold cartel does. This is exactly how they do it. It's a classic example of it. It's just not a free market. It's a rigged market that we, you and I have put up with for a long time, and it will be till they blow up. And they look for cover, they look for reasons, they look for excuses to do it, and they look for technical levels that are going to help them. Trading back down to the 200-day moving average and bouncing off of it, uh, and then being just hammered or drowned and dumped on with paper. Um, once that breaks, all, suddenly all, all the momentum algos see that, and whoa, silver just broke down through its 200-day moving average. Sell, 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 sell. That's exactly right. 
I mean, these are the pros of the pros, and they have a lot of experience doing exactly what they're doing. And that's my point, I guess, is that nothing ever changes. I keep looking for it, and it will. It's just so tedious to deal with. And uh, kind of bring that back to the Jesse Livermore story. Once it finally changes, um, it can be epic. Jesse Livermore was a little bit early, and since he had gone short on margin, using massive margin, his capital was wiped out just with kind of small moves in the market, the market continuing. out 21 it's what i expect to happen in the price of silver that is going to be chaotic volatile and like rarely seen before and i think when we get to that point concern again is that open interest is is how is this going to resolve itself i mean how can jp morgan and their all their shorts cover because when the price starts to move up or the physical market takes over or whatever silver does what we finally think it's going to do if if they're buying who's going to sell Cover. The specs won't be, be uh, you know, selling like they are now because they're forced to liquidate. Actually, for a change, take some profits because it's it's been at, at present price levels. It's still the uh, uh, the JPM and the other gold cartel shorts that are still. Speculators selling and selling to close out their long. You're going to see selling there even even after the bullion banks go long. Uh, adding on new shorts because they think it, it's uh, reached a top, but yeah, I think you're right. I think there'll come a day where there won't be there won't be any offers, there won't be any sellers, and I mean it happens with all markets and major top. So mega silver bull. Signs of the lasting change in which we're going to be on our way. And so wrong. So we, we all we do is look for something that's different that changes and says, and we have an aha moment, and uh, that's what we need to get to. All right. Well, before we let you go, Bill. letting the listeners know to, to take to heart here uh, it's been like we said it's been demoralizing particularly with the Dow uh, hitting new highs 